Hello and welcome to MIP TV. I'm with me for his uh, annual book review, or his weekly book review, is Bob Cook from Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. And we've got a real corker of a book today. It's by a perennial favourite author of people who study in the world of counselling and psychotherapy. And it's called Lying on the Couch, a novel by Irving Yalom. And I'm going to make a guess here. I think lying may very well have two meanings. <laughs> Yes, I think I think I think it may be all not what it seems. Am I right, Bob? You're completely right. And I think this is number sixty book review. And yeah. if it is, I think it's a very apt book. The last book on review I did was Love's Execution yes. by Yalom. So you can see I'm a Yalom fan. Yes. Really big Yalom fan. And this book um is a novel, so that's really important. And on the front page it says this, you know, it's fiction. But I think, this is my fantasy, that the psychiatrist or the young psychiatrist stroke psychotherapist uh, in this American wilderness um, uh, was probably based on a young Irvin Yellen. But that's my fantasy. But I think people who read this book might well see um, some of these existential pathways yes. uh, in this uh, young therapist that is the centre of this book. Yes, because it, 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 it is a, it's, it, unlike a standard psychotherapy book, which talks about practice or observations. This is a novel. This is a, this is a novella story yes. of um, a young psychotherapist yeah. And there's experiences in practice. And the lying's interesting because I know that when we spoke off camera, yeah. um, there's a, a great story about a Rolex watch and a thousand dollars, isn't okay. it? Yeah, I'm going to just loosely tell you some of the strands uh, in, in these stories. So, this is a young psychotherapist learning his trade. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I really love about this book, to the extent, I will probably read it again because I loved it so much is, is the mind of this young psychotherapist explaining some of his thoughts, some of his, some of his real intuitions, which come from his psychoanalytical psychodynamic existential uh, background. So he's talking about a lot of psychoanalytical ideas uh, because he was part of the psychoanalytical movement, this uh, young psychotherapist. And it's fascinating, fascinating to hear the richness of these psychoanalytical origins and thinkings with his clients. So for any therapist to begin to listen on paper, or if it's audible, which it was for me, the workings of a psychoanalytical, psychoanalyst thinking in terms of defenses and how he would be with the young clients and practicing actually what this therapist called the truth therapist. In other words, getting off the couch and talking in real terms to these uh, these clients uh, he had so that's what some of the stories about he was going to be very real working the counter transplants and being very honest with his clients so this was the new sort of basis this young psychoanalyst was going to take that's mm. the sort of hub however of course he runs into some problems uh, and lying is one of them. So he, he had uh, this one client, and we'll get to the Rolex watch in a minute. He had this one client um, who was the wife of another client uh, that he had. And this other client and this, uh, th this wife um, split up, had a divorce, and the, the wife decided to get back at the... Um, the husband or the ex-husband uh -huh. and decided to do this by going into therapy anonymously with <laughs> the husband's therapist who was this young new right. therapist we're talking about so she came in anonymously and created a character and her idea was to seduce under the guise of erotic transference um and have a uh, get the new therapist, the therapist who was the therapist of her husband, uh, to have a relationship with her right. um, and then report the therapist to the ethical regulating board. So in the process, she creates this huge web of lies um, and, uh, 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 and is very directive 
within the uh, sexual transference to attempt to get the therapist off the chair onto the rug in the yes. therapy waist. <laughs> off the couch and into bed. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so the lies become more and more and more interwoven. And at the same time, this uh, therapist has a supervisor. And the supervisor um, also uh, believes another one of his therapists, who's a con man, who signs on for six sessions of um, uh, brief psychotherapy then after six sessions um, says would you like to um, have some tips about uh, these wonderful investments and shares and uh, will you send over ninety thousand dollars and you can get two hundred thousand dollars back and we'll cement this with a wonderful Rolex watch which I'll buy you and this supervisor who's the supervisor of this therapist buys all this sends over £90,000, puts the Relox watch on and then finds it's a con and there's no stocks and shares and there's no... And this Rolex walks. <laughs> it's, you know, it's all a real... But it's interesting because, you know, in our loan of business, we are supposed to believe all the things that clients say to us. So at one yeah. level, we're holding uh, the truth of the client and that the other level some of the things our clients tell us may be so bizarre um it's could be open to question but it's so interesting if you think about it really because how easy can it be for clients to dupe therapists if you think about it yes and as i think about that i think about many of the stories and tales i've been told my clients and i think wow part of me somewhere i i i have this duality is can this be actually true and i've got it and of course it is because you have to believe the truth of the clients so you've got this whole genesis going on and it's so interesting to see how the therapist and the supervisor actually think their way through this and of course all these stories get interwined together yes it's it's, it's a proper morality tale isn't it bob Yes, it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it sounds like a classic Greek morality tale, doesn't yeah, it? Yes, it's a Shakespearean, yes, <laughs> like Shakespearean. Sophocles story. would have been proud of this and say it's you know, it's yeah. intrigue yeah. and sex and, and money and, and you know, money, greed, sex, they're all there. And again, I, I can't stress how much it's wonderful to listen to the. Uh, nuances and the meandering and the psychoanalytical talk inside the therapist's head so for example oh he goes out he goes to a book launch where he's got this new book being launched and he meets this woman who who he lusts after and he's and he's beyond thinking shall i actually make a move here this is the therapist yeah yeah outside. and then he decides not to and sitting 100 yards away is this scheming a new client he's taken on who's watching and you know all these things come back to haunt him haunt him <laughs> in the therapeutic room oh my god oh it's like uh, it's like a pit in the pendulum isn't it it's like a kind of uh, you know is it Ale poe is it alexander poe i think isn't I it remember. yeah but there's this kind of how yeah. many of us get caught up in the or could get caught up in the erotic sentence well, yes, I mean, erotic transfers can, can I mean, I've, I've, known, I've known someone who's got, who got caught up in that. The Rolex watch and the bonds, I think, I think, I, I, I think that, uh, I think, you know, I, I'd hope that people didn't go for that. And, I, and I'm hoping that people watching don't think that um, being a counsellor or psychotherapist is kind of uh, salacious <laughs> eroticism and uh, high finance because it isn't either of those in my experience it's none of those but you know what over the 35 years that I've, and the thousands of client contact hours you know i've heard so many stories i've had there's nothing that will shock me absolutely and then at the same time i need to hold that as the client's truth yeah and what about the client who's actually well you know it's just a it, it brings all those ethical issues, all the, to me anyway, the familiarity of story, the familiarity of uh, real oh, quandaries in the psychoanalyst's mind. Mm. Um, it's so familiar to me. Well, yes, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the attraction of the book, isn't it? Because I'm sure that 
from what you've said, anybody mm. who's been practicing a few years will, re- will relate at some level to yeah. some, some of the stories. In, and then in terms of uh, believing clients, of course we always believe clients, yeah. but there are times when, like, as you say, client stories can be um, so fantastic and so um, unbelievable, un- unbelievably alarming in some cases. Yes, yeah. That um, you know, you couldn't, you probably won't see it in a soap opera or read it in a book. No, and and this is another one. I'll give you two more very quickly. I know because of the time, but I like to so I have another whole issue about uh, um, uh, meeting uh, clients uh, after time or phoning them up at nine o'clock and 10 o'clock at night because they're suicidal and they're going to kill themselves. Uh, it texts policies and they keep texting and texting and texting and suddenly they're outside their door in a camp camper van from uh, going over the 50 minutes to it's now 70 minutes and then it's 80 minutes, but he can't get rid of the client because the, we could go on and on. And yeah. how the therapist and the psychoanalyst are musing about what to do about it. Yeah. 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 So Lying on the Couch by Irving Yalom. Yeah, yeah, I've got lots of energy for it's it. It's got lots of energy for that. It, it is a novel. It's not a kind of like oh, yeah. a, no, it's a, novel. a clinical book, but it is a novel. But it seems to have some kind of uh, existential truth in. Yes, I think so. As usual, put a link in the, in the comments bar below so people can examine it. And as always, Bob doesn't get paid for book reviews does it for the love of it and you know let's have some comments in the comments bar below have you read this book are you a fan of Irving Yalom in which case which book do you like and uh, we'll see you in book review 61 won't we Bob yeah and I'll just one thing this is my favorite book of the year well there we go there you have it book at book of 2018 mm. as always Bob thank you very much thank you